We are back on Inside Politics with Dr. John Vile, political science professor at MTSU, talking about the second week of hearings of the Select Committee in the House, so looking into the January 6th takeover of the U.S. Capitol. Uh, Dr. Vile, before the committee met uh, later this week on Wednesday, the committee issued a, a video that uh, confirmed what some people had said earlier, that there had been at least one congressman who took some people who were later engaged in the demonstrations of the takeover of the Capitol through the Capitol for tours, even though the Capitol itself on January, in January of 20, 2021 was closed. They took pictures of some strange things. They took pictures of hallways, of uh, staircases, and even of security checkpoints. Uh, the Republicans are going to have some explaining to do about this, as well as those who apparently are going to be disclosed later by the committee through their investigation, that many Republicans actually asked the White House for pardons. Well, I think I don't know about the first. I think the jury is still out. Uh, I've seen conflicting uh, explanations, including explanations from the Capitol Police. Uh, if, in fact, a, you know, I, I would like, I guess I would hope that if this were happening, that the congressman was simply naive and did not, you know, thought these people were particularly interested in Congress rather than burning the place down. Um, but you know, I guess time will tell on this. The latest committee hearing got a little wonky on Thursday, a lot of talk about constitutional issues, but uh, when the actual main witness, who was a, a re very revered constitutional scholar and judge, revered particularly among Republicans, uh, 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 Michael Liddy, uh, when he made his uh, statement that President Trump, what he did on January and his allies did on January 6th, was a clear and present danger to the democracy in this country and could happen again in 2024, that was pretty riveting stuff. It is, and again, you know, the primary just, the, the power to, of Congress, congressional investigation is not actually listed in the Constitution, but a number of Supreme Court decisions have affirmed that, that that power is consistent with the ability to make future legislation. And some of the things that are being discussed is that, you know, the, the wording of the laws regarding what the vice president's responsibility is you know, perhaps needs to be spelled out more clearly. It's never been an issue before, but if, you know, as, as witness, you know, think back to 1961 where Richard Nixon had to affirm that John F. Kennedy was the new president, or 2001 where Al Gore had to affirm that George Bush was the president. Uh, much of the Thursday hearing focused in on uh, the, the constant pressure being put on by former President Trump against his former Vice President Mike Pence for, to basically uh, break the law and declare Trump the winner uh, and not certify the 2020 election. Um, Mike Pence did not testify. Many of his aides did. Didn't you think the hearings made Mike, Trump, Mike Pence look like an American hero? So why didn't he testify himself? You know, it's, it's really odd. It's almost like a love-hate relationship, isn't it? Or, or a, or a what, what do they call it? The Stockholm Syndrome, where Pence, Pence knows that much of his support is all, many people who support him have also supported Donald Trump. So he's willing to do what's right, but he does not, he does not want to be attacking Trump directly or, you know, being the one that actually brings him down. Well, Pence didn't testify. Also, perhaps that may be pushing the envelope too far. He is a likely candidate for the 2024 Republican nomination for yes. president. His aides testifying is one thing. Him testifying might have been a bridge too far. I think that's right. Um, so um, what do Republican leaders do to limit all this, this damage that's coming out, not just for Donald Trump, but for themselves? Many of them have been uh, very supportive of the president despite all these charges. Are they going to continue to double down on this, or are you going to be seeing more people moving away and giving more distance away from President Trump? Well, unfortunately... And I think the same is true of Democratic politicians as well as Republicans, but they're much better at following public opinion than they are at leading it. If public, you know, if public opinion turns against Trump, uh, they'll be the first to go along. If it doesn't, they'll continue to try to straddle the fence. It's not clear exactly how this is going to work into the investigation, but it appears the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, Jenny Thomas, is going to testify before the committee. Uh, she's continued to be implicated in talking with many of the people that were involved about trying to overturn the election. Supreme Court's got a lot of controversy and many controversial decisions coming out in the next couple of weeks. Is this what the nation's highest court needs to be wading into yet more controversies? No, it certainly doesn't. Um, you know, Thomas, to some extent, could, could limit the extent of this damage by simply, 
recusing himself from any cases that involve you know this election uh on the other hand we don't at this point we don't know for sure that thomas actually talked with his you know that his wife tried to persuade him in regard to this issue and you know if feminism has taught us anything it's that husbands and wives have you know sometimes have that have their own careers and can pursue their own thoughts but but it's it's certainly troubling when when thomas then goes in and you know doesn't recuse recuse himself and perhaps a larger issue is that the supreme court unlike all federal judges doesn't have their own code of ethics well i mean that, i think that's right i mean there's sort of it's it's a suggestion right, that there's nobody going to call them to account you know unless they commit commit an impeachable offense and i'm not sure I, I don't think that Thomas has crossed that line. Briefly in closing, are you concerned that the democracy of this country is at stake, particularly as we look towards the 2024 election, that what we had happen in January 6, 2021 could happen again in 2025? I am, and you know, it goes beyond the Constitution. Uh, I was telling somebody the other day, my, my kids did not participate in sports, but had they done so, and I, and I found out there was a coach who cared nothing about nothing but winning, I'd find a new coach because the rules of the game are just as important as the outcome. Dr. Vile, thank you very much for joining us. Always great to have you on the program. You bring such great insights. So we appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on Inside Politics. Hope you'll be back here again for a future show. If you can't get enough politics in the meantime, you can go to the News Channel 5 website. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. There's a new commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you here next time. Goodbye.